Hey, good to see you again. The factory sent over the parts that were looking good on the rig. They're being fitted as we speak. Have a look at the report. Yes, hello everyone and welcome back to another episode in my F1 2017 career mode here today around Silverstone and uh, we managed to get the engine power part fitted after it failed in the last episode of course if you didn't see the last episode please do go, please go check it out um, it will either be in the end slate or a link in the description or something but um, without further ado let's get into practice for our home Grand Prix Welcome to Silverstone, home of Formula One racing in Great Britain, where shortly we're expecting the cars to appear for today's practice session. Anthony Davidson, you've driven this circuit more than a few times in your career, and you've been around long enough to remember the pre-wing layout as well. But how do you like Silverstone in its current guise? Well, the old circuit was a lot of fun, of course, but I do like the current layout. The reprofiled Abbey is faster than it used to be, and I always felt it was missing a sort of slow technical section. And now the corners up at Village and the Loop gives us that. So yeah, I'm a fan, and uh, on top of that, I think it's created some more overtaken opportunities. So here we are completing all of the uh, practice programs that we normally do, doing rather well on the track climatization around Silverstone. Uh, I do, I do quite like this circuit. It's, well, the Toro Rosso didn't really, but I liked it. Um, because you know it's, it was a um, it's a nice it's a nice flowing track you know it, obviously if you know what I'm on about then you know um, but uh, as you can see now completing all of the practice programs here coming across the line to finish the qualifying pace now I think that was yeah qualifying pace and um, next up we'll be doing the race strategy as per normal um, so uh, coming across the line to do that and uh, hopefully you know, hopefully all these signs will uh, hopefully be able to us, uh, let us do well in this qualifying, I don't know what I'm saying. But uh, I managed to get simultaneous development as well. But uh, without further ado, let's get into qualifying. Welcome to this afternoon's qualifying session here at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix. This is a track that tends to ask quite a lot of the tyres, both front and rear. So is it fair to say a great deal of management will be needed in order to do well here? Tyre wear will probably be the dominating factor around this track. It's so easy to use up the life in your tyres as you seek to find the lap time. If you have a good balance to begin with, like the Mercedes and Red Bull, you'll always stand a better chance. So here we are then starting our qualifying run here around Silverstone. It's a very dull day, so very British weather as per normal and uh, coming across the line now to uh, finish our first run and uh, unfortunately I had to end the first run early because as you can see they've got a gearbox issue so uh, we lost seven so more gearbox issues here so wonderful but um, I managed to get in another run and uh, as we come across the line now to see where this put us I mean we have improved but where does this put us in the Grand Prix 16 I mean, it's not the best but I guess we'll have to figure out something in the race we wind down from the excitement of qualifying, here's a look at your top three. Bottas, Hamilton and Max Verstappen. The grid is set then, so that just leaves the race itself. Join us tomorrow, where we'll be live with all the action. And until then, it's goodbye. So as you can see there then, qualifying in 16th place is Carlos Sainz being in 12th, so uh, not the best qualifying session for myself there. And uh, I mean, we're behind Stroll, so it's not bad. And uh, we're ahead of the McLaren and the, the McLarens and the Sauber's, so uh, at least we're not both behind them. But um, let's see what we can do in the race from 16th place. And uh, I want to hand over to Crofty and Anthony Davidson to introduce you to the race. We're right back where it all began. The very first World Championship Grand Prix was held here at Silverstone in 1950.
Well then, after an exciting qualifying session yesterday, let's take a look at how the cars line up. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fence starts from pole position, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Ricardo, Kimi Raikkonen, and Vettel, Ocon, Massa, Hulkenberg, and Roman Grosjean, Magnussen, Sainz, Sergio Perez, and Palmer, Stroll, and the Toro Rosso, Fernando Alonso, and Pascal Wehrlein, Ericsson, and Stoffel van Dorn completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. OK, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. Jeff obviously doesn't know who is driving the car. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is me we're talking about, but um, the planned strategy is super soft to mediums to the end. So whether we can actually do that, I don't know. But uh, I did fuel the car up quite a bit to uh, get some more rich mix in there and uh, hopefully we can have some good overtakes in this Grand Prix some good action as well as we uh, set off full information like now but uh, I just want to say guys um, I've said it in previous episodes as well but uh, you know thank thank you for the support on this series so far I know I know it's Toro so I know a lot of other YouTubers are doing it but you know it's uh, it's it's uh, you know it's nice to see support but um, here we are now coming around on the formation lap uh, right behind Stroll because I got really impatient and I couldn't be bothered to carry on so uh, I got really impatient and now we're coming up to the grid now and we've gone inside Stroll for some reason I don't know what the AI was doing there but anyway coming up to the grid slot now uh, for the start of the Grand Prix just waiting for those five red lights now to come on and get this Grand Prix started and underway and uh, here they come now it's one light it's two lights Three lights, it's four lights, it's five lights. It's light time when we go here for the Silverstone Grand Prix. Palmer has got off to an absolute Palmer esque start, which is crap. And uh, we're going to go down the inside of him into the first corner. We've, there's been contact behind us, and Palmer has gone round for some reason. I don't know why. And uh, we're now diving down the inside of three cars, but unfortunately, because it was done under the yellow flags, we get a legal overtake. So uh, we have to hand those positions back. And now we are back into 14th, is that? I can't quite see. Um, but now, coming off lap 3 now, we've put a wheel on the grass. We've actually locked up, but it's turned into a, an amazing overtake somehow. And, uh, yeah, we're now up into 13th. I can say I didn't mean to do that. Um, so we're uh, coming down now to the same corner, and we're now overtaking Perez, is that? For 12th. And now, I did mean to do that, that time. Um, so... Obviously, as you can see there. Okay, the gearbox is running a fault. Shift speeds will be reduced. So, as I was saying, uh, Jeff interrupted me, and now we've uh, we've got a gearbox issue again. So, uh, basically, the gear shifts don't happen straight away exactly. Uh, as you can see there, for example, it's just dropped down to third on the exit, and now fourth. And um, this really, this really, really, really made me angry. Like you, you don't know how angry I got because I was doing so well in the goal. I mean, look, I'm going through Brooklyn's in eighth gear. I mean, what what's happening here? And now we're being done round the outside by Magnussen, and Magnussen does a cheeky swipe, and I lose a bit of my front wing. So uh, yeah, I love this part of the Grand Prix. You know, I'm not going to lie, it's the best part of the Grand Prix ever. Can you see the sarcasm in my voice there? We run wide because we're in the wrong gear once again. And unfortunately, going on to lap 7 now, we've dropped so far back and we still have the issue. This is three laps later, we still have the issue. And this is embarrassing. Yep, the so line just did me down the inside. A Sauber did me down the inside. I mean, can you believe that? But um, here we are now, coming around this corner and I think... Yeah, coming around Stowe, and I think the gearbox issue has now been fixed, so hopefully we can get back past Verline. Um, I hope. But uh, unfortunately we didn't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think the, the front wing was the issue, really, after the gearbox was fixed, the front wing was the issue. So uh, I decided to come in a lap early, a few laps earlier than normal, to uh, get a new front wing and a new set of tyres and reset the race, from my point of view anyway. 
and uh, coming down the world's longest pitch straight, for some reason they do it at 37 miles per hour in silver. I don't know why, it's, it's a circuit, not a street circuit, it's an actual track. So I don't know why they do it at 37 miles per hour, but guessing our front wing change now in stone dead last, as per usual. Um, as now, I forget to <laughs> hold in the clutch. And yeah, as you can probably tell at this point, I wasn't really concentrating because the gearbox issue just threw me off. And then the front wing made it even worse. So I was basically all over the place at this point. Like I wasn't really interested in doing the Grand Prix anymore, but I'd, I kept going. Um, you know, I, I held out, coming out the pit lane now, and dead last, miles behind anyone else. And yeah, it's not really been the best best Grand Prix for myself, considering it's my home Grand Prix so far. But uh, we've got yellow flags up ahead, um, and Verline is out of the Grand Prix, Ricardo is out of the Grand Prix, and Massa. Earth has gone on there. It's happened down the Hangar Strait, or the Wellington Strait, I can't remember which one it is. But uh, we're now catching up to Van Dorn now. Van Dorn! Yep, there it is. In case you, in case some of you don't know, as you say it. Gone around the outside of me. It's a cop. I mean, come on. In case some of you don't, don't know what that was, uh, watch Head to Head on my channel with with uh, Tom or Foxy98, and you'll understand. But uh, as we're now going side by side near enough through Maggots and Beckett's and Chapel, but we're, of course, it's a McLaren Honda, so we're going to have the, the, the uh, faster straight line speed. That's the word. And uh, we coast past him, and uh, that was it really for the Grand Prix. Unfortunately, um, as we come around the final two corners now, to take a, a very disappointing 13th place after a very disappointing Grand Prix. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. So, at how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, the safety car completely changed the race, didn't it? It's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it, but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position. Here come our winning drivers then, out onto the podium at the end of a thrilling Grand Prix. The drama and excitement are over, and it's time to let it all sink in. Congratulations to our top three today. And after this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. Lewis Hamilton takes over the lead of the driver's championship after an excellent result. Now then, Anthony Davidson, who was your driver of the day? Difficult call, Crofty, but I'd like to say Sergio Perez. He's just so gifted at getting the most out of his tyres, and he showed that here today. On to the constructors then. Mercedes move to the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from Force India this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After all that excitement, it's time for a lie down, I think. Thanks for joining us, and goodbye until the next race. So a very disappointing home Grand Prix there for myself. I'm just, I just apologise for it, really. Um, I apologise for there not being much action, really, in the Grand Prix. But uh, because of that, we dropped down to 8th um, behind Sergio Perez now. So uh, unfortunately, we're slowly losing momentum again. I mean, we're just not consistent with our performances, but the top four, once again, split by eight points. So, you know, and unfortunately, Toro Rosso losing their fifth place there in the Constructors, which is very unfortunate. But again, Mercedes have gone on top again in, in the Constructors. So those two are chopping and changing. So crazy, it's unbelievable. But um, unfortunately then, moving on from a very disappointing Grand Prix, I got a uh, classic invitational event here. And I went with the Ferrari 2004 because, you know, it's the best, it's the loudest one out there and it's just the greatest sound ever. So uh, I will now hand over to Crofty to introduce you to the Invitational event. It's time for a well-deserved rest from the Championship for a classic exhibition event today. It's winner takes all, so who will emerge on top in this unique challenge? So here we are then on the grid, it's a time attack or pursuit Grand Prix where I have to finish first and everyone else gets a head start before me. So um, 
I will now let you listen to the replay, and uh, if you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like and a comment, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.